So this is our copper. It's sold 10 foot lengths, 120 inches. Divide that by three, comes out equally to 40 inches. So what we did is we marked all of them at one time to make it easy on ourselves. 40 inches here and another 40 inches here. And what we did is we went ahead and cut them knowing that we already had them marked. It makes it a lot easier. These two junctions, these two 90s, a street elbow and a regular elbow are key to this project. This allowed us to put 110 feet inside of a 48 by 46 box. So without that street elbow, we would not be able to do it because it creates a turn with only a half inch space between each run of 40 inch copper. Here's the copper laid out on a board, mostly to show you the two elbows, the street and regular elbow joined together, how it only takes a half inch gap between both of those coppers. And also so that you can see how it fits on your board. We ended up adding more copper once we finally soldered it. And we learned the soldering by watching YouTube videos. It was pretty simple, only took one can of propane, one small $3, I think $3.90 uh, can of propane to complete the entire soldering project. You're gonna wanna pressure test the copper before you put it in the box. We simply hooked up a hose to the input and let the water run out the output. Pressure testing it is important because if you put it in the box and it leaks, well, then you're in trouble. Our pressure test was as high a pressure as that hose there would allow us to go. And then we looked, we had no leaks, so we were solid. And then we continued on with the build. This is what we used to move the copper around when we had to go from spot to spot because the copper is kind of like an accordion. It, it will move left, right, up and down it's uh it's not solid so you need something to you know physically put it up on the board so you don't break any of your connections after soldering and after doing your your pressure testing and this is how we placed it in the board and once we did that we cut the cable ties off of it All right, to start the build, I want to make sure you know that you're going to need these two tools to continue. Uh, an offset hand seamer. The offset works much better than the straight hand seamer. So look for an offset. I got mine on Amazon. I put a link down below if you can't uh, find it somewhere else. And the 10 snips, obviously, to cut the uh, aluminum and the edging, roof edging. And here is that roof edging. Ours are 2 by 3 by 10 feet. Also let you know they come in different colors. You can get it in brown, get it in white. So if you want the frame of your box to be a different color, it's pretty easy to do simply by a different color. And then what you need to do is go ahead and make two bends or a bend and a straighten. You got to straighten the little quarter inch part up there you see on the before picture. And then you got to make on our build to fit our product, we needed a three quarter inch bend on the after picture as you see that one bent before and after there's a difference there, which leaves you two and a quarter inches on the after picture to place your product. This is where you're going to place your plywood, your insulation, and your copper. So it all has to fit in that gap. So if you have a large piece of insulation, you might want to use the 2x4 because these are 2x3s. And if I had to do it again, I probably would do a 2x4 with the same bin so I had more room inside uh, the frame of the box itself. That's where the three quarter inch needs to be is on that side. We've already straightened the quarter inch and we're gonna put our product right there in the middle. I put two red marks on mine so I could know where the three quarter inch was. And it's important when you do this to press down on something solid so you get a nice crease on the roof edging itself. Just go back and squeeze it and it'll be straight all along. Our first cut on the roof edging is gonna be this two inch end cap. Simply put, you're gonna cut with your 10 snips, those two red lines, or however, whatever length that you wanted. Because the roof edging is 10 feet long, you'll be able to cover two sides of the plywood. Now the second cut, this is the easiest one. All you have to do is mark your roof edging right at the edge of the board, then bend it, it's simple. And then once it's completed, you'll see nice and tight bend, and you've got your first piece almost completed. Uh, the next move you have to make is you have to do the end cap. The end cap is where we're going to tie together two pieces of roof edging. That's this right here. It's important that when you're going to tie these two together that you slip the second roof edging underneath the first roof edging first so that you get the correct measurement, the outside of that roof edging that's 
slipped on there because it does widen the plywood just a little bit and there's two cuts that you're going to do this time you're going to just snip the three quarter inch and the two inch but you're going to cut completely off that cut number two see how the top first roof edging is bent and covering over the second roof edging now it's just tight and the water comes from the top and runs down and you can see how it's layered there by putting the roof edging underneath it it allows it to keep the water if moisture does come in to run off so the frame is complete at this point it's not attached it's not screwed in it's just wrapped around the, the plywood at this point what we do need to do is we need to turn it over and put on the aluminum flashing the aluminum flashing is what's going to protect this back of this board let's do that now this is the back side of our plywood this is the bottom and that's the top up there we're going to protect it against moisture uh, by using these aluminum uh, flashing sheets that we made these are or was 20 inches wide and 25 feet long we just cut these three pieces down that's all we needed uh, to our size to fit our board and what we need to do is just layer it create a layering effect placing one down and then layering the second one over that one and then of course doing this one and that way the water will run down this way if there's any moisture at all we'll also take uh, silicone caulking and put it in these seams running in the middle here and then secure it by putting screws in but as far as the edging go what we're going to do is we're going to use our roof edging but since this is galvanized and this is aluminum we uh, had to protect it some way what we're going to do is use primer etching we spray painted the primer etching in here already for this roof edging we're going to put two inch uh, stripe down each edge of the board and then we're going to put silicone on top of that and those things will help protect against uh, any galvanized corrosion once we place it down we're, we're going to use stainless steel screws to secure this completed the spray spraying of the self-etching primer two and a half inches around the border of the back of the board we've screwed down the center of the aluminum flashing to secure it to the plywood and now we're going to slip these four bricks underneath that underneath the board and then put the frame back on top of it so that it elevated so we can add the screws to the outside edges of the roof edging but before that we're going to spray paint the roof edging uh, with self-etching primer also so that when you place it back on the board the roof edging uh, has primer on it and the board has primer on it and we have silicone in between that as well Make sure you place your installation in the box before adding your frame. With the bricks elevating the project, we're able to take the outside roof edging and put in screws all the way through the plywood. Without the lift of the bricks and without that separation, the wood would just fall down and you wouldn't really be able to get it up against that roof edging. I want to show you that we didn't take any pictures of the silicone being uh, spread along the edge or in between the aluminum sheeting, but you can see it peeking out here. Okay, our box is complete. At this point, you could actually put PEX tubing, irrigation tubing, copper. You could put a garden hose in there, cover it up with your polycarbonate, and call it a day. You need to take the exact same insulation you're using and cut four strips, uh, one for each edge of the box, and just simply push it in the gap between the insulation and the top three-quarter inch uh, bin that you made and do all four corners but we're here for the copper so let's get this project completed next we're going to put on the solar fins and the solar fins if you remember we talked about the fact that there's only a half inch in between the gaps and the 40 inch copper so we have to cut the fins down on one side so that we can layer them in one under another and I'm going to show you that now So we need to make one more cut on our solar collectors. We already made one cut, and that was to cut it down from 48 inches long down to 38 and a half to fit our project. Yours might be different. We went ahead and pulled off the blue film. That was pretty simple to do. Now we need to make this cut. It's going to make this a little shorter. We're going to use something like, uh, you could use a copper. Go in here and make a nice straight line. We're going to use this piece of metal. That fits our project very well. We're going to use a DeWalt cutter because we go through a lot of blades and we can just break these off. 
I think it's every two or three fins uh, we have to change the, the blade and uh, it allows us to do the, the foam insulation pretty well. So here I'll show you how simple it is. It's really soft aluminum. It only takes maybe two, three for it to cut through as soft as it is, but it puts a nice straight edge on it. And when you're doing it, you want to make sure you have like a piece of copper or something inside this tube so that it doesn't flatten or, or get out of shape. This is kind of unique. What's going to happen here is we have one of our solar collectors already cut to the half inch. It's sprayed with primer etching like we did with the uh, roof edging because of the uh, correlation between copper and aluminum but then we have the grease the thermal grease and a caulking tube it's almost one third that tube believe it or not it's 100 grams 10 bucks on amazon we're going to put a small bead down the middle we don't need a lot but it is going to adhere this is thermal grease it's used for cpus and heat sinks that transfer the heat away from the cpu so it's got great thermal conductivity Finally, on to the solar fins. So this is why we had to cut down the solar fin to a half inch in the, in, before, is that this half inch is gonna fit in between the two coppers that you put this one on top of. And you're gonna slide the longer or the thicker side of the aluminum fin underneath the coppers in front of it and do one after another. And what happens, it creates a layering effect where you actually get three layers of aluminum underneath the copper. So I think you're getting the idea now. What basically you do is you're slipping it underneath and just forming it on top and you do one after another. And then by the time that you finish, you've created one big solar panel. After we put the screws into this thing, it is solid because all the aluminum is slid underneath the front of it and it ties in the back. So it becomes one big panel like you see here, which is where all the screws are attached and in the box showing you the three layers that are created by layering the aluminum underneath one another. Go ahead and paint the inside of the box high temp, flat black uh, spray paint. It takes Mine took two cans, so make sure you get enough. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one by two roof edging, just like our two by three roof edging, the same, same roof edging, but one by twos. We're gonna put a strip of three quarter inch weather stripping on the three quarter inch size. We're gonna cut them to match the size of our box, whatever the strip is, mine's 48 by 46. You're gonna cut two holes in it to match your exit for your copper. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna place the polycarbonate right on top of it and put it in between, just like this. Hey, we're getting real close to the end, um, almost done. So we have our multi-wall uh, polycarbonate Multi-wall simply means uh, dual layers or multiple layers inside of it, like a double pane piece of glass. Uh, we are going to put a piece of aluminum tape and fold it over to keep the heat inside of the, the um, polycarbonate. And then we're going to use weather stripping. This is three quarter inch weather stripping. Uh, we bought it on Amazon, 16 feet each, $9 for the both of them. Uh, this fit our project perfectly being three quarter inches was our build. Uh, so once we put the polycarbonate on the edge here, we're going to use our cap piece um, to then secure it down like so and screw it in using stainless steel screws. And we're going to screw right through the, the uh, polycarbonate. And then once we do that, we'll show you the project. And here it is, almost done. Looks really good. Those metal edges around the outside, really like that much better than wood itself. Uh, we do have one more thing coming up though. We do need to place the ends on the copper. What we did is we used brass double valved ends, top and bottom, which allows us to allow the water to come out if we need to empty it. All we have to do is rock it back and forth. And it allows us to have the water go a different direction if we don't want it to go back in, say, the pool or another direction. And if you close the water valves off and after you take all the water out of the box itself, that's how you would boil water. Because what we did was we emptied it or had no water in it. And then once we uh, closed all the valves, we opened the water as it rushed through the entire 
build all rush through all that 110 feet of copper by the time it came out the other end as you see right here it came out boiling and it we didn't open up the valve that goes to the pool and allow the pressure to escape there we would have had a lot more boiling water uh even in on our very first try so again this produces a lot of hot water it produces consistent hot water i hope you'll look at our next video where we're going to go through and show you measurements and temperatures that'll be part three we'll be going to going through how recirculating the same water over and over how quickly we can heat up uh shower water bath water and, and that type of thing don't forget we have a new build coming out re-release with pex tubing these copper manifolds are going to be used with pex tubing in a similar box build that you see here so i hope you look forward to seeing that as well so hit that subscription button like our video and uh, we'll see you on the next build